Hi, my name's Conan, and in 2019, I bought this 1968 Playmore Model 140 for $600 off of Facebook Marketplace. All right, so I just wanted to show you the before. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. It was in bad shape, as you can see. It needed to be completely rebuilt, and while I wanted to try and save some things, really, nothing was salvageable. Would you have camped in here? I certainly wouldn't have. Well, it's gonna be a good project. Anyway, after two years and a bit of money, I'll tell you how much later, I was able to take this camper from trash to treasure. And here's how I did it in about 10 minutes. First, my father-in-law and I demolished the interior. We took everything out until there was nothing left but the studs. And granted, this is maybe not the way you should do it. Then we removed the windows. Then we pulled off the roof rail and removed all the butyl tape. We pulled about a million staples out. Then we were able to remove the roof. Up next, I measured where all the studs were located and marked them on the skin, which ultimately didn't really do a whole lot of good for me, but it made it a little easier to measure the distance between them. Then we pulled those studs out and all of the sports. We took a reciprocating saw and cut the bolts and nails and stuff that were still holding the walls on and pulled them off. Then I used a pry bar and some muscle and removed all the old decking. I was then able to grind off all the old rust, I primed the frame and added a final coat of paint to it. After that it was time to start rebuilding these old walls or what was left of them. Yeah. I made a rough sketch using the measurements I had taken when I was pulling the camper apart and we laid new studs directly on the old ones and attached them together using gussets that my father-in-law cut. Then we cut out the front curve and the rear curve using a jigsaw and laid them in place. We bent a tiny strip of wood across the top of the studs just like they did in the original. Then we faced the whole thing with quarter inch plywood. And then repeated for the next wall. With the walls built, I was able to move on to building the subflooring for the decking. It was pretty straightforward. I just ripped down some 2x4s to be the right size and then laid the decking on top. Cleaned up the wheel wells and reattached them at this time too. And then it was time to put the walls back on. So I got my handy dandy trim router with a flush trim bit and made quick work of cutting the outer curve and all of the windows. Then we put the walls back on the frame, braced them so they didn't fall over, and put up the other side. After that, I put welting on, which is sort of like a little rubber trim that fits between your wall and your ceiling panel. And then we started putting on the ceiling panels. I wish I had attached the ceiling joists to the panels before I had attached them. That would have kept them much flatter, but you know, you learn by doing. So once the ceiling panels were in place, we added those exterior uh, studs or joists. And I started building the curve that the roof skin would then attach to out of leftover strips of 8 inch slywood from the ceiling. Built those up using glue and staples over the whole camper from front to back. Then my father-in-law cut pieces of styrofoam for insulation. And my mother-in-law, who's always been the family electrician, installed the wiring and hung the breaker box. She left lots of extra cables so that I could then come back later and run those two outlets and lights and things like that. Then it was time for the side skins to go back on. 
We'd already cleaned it thoroughly with Goof Off to try and remove any remaining butyl tape and dirt. So we put the skin back up, checking along the way to make sure that the windows fit and it lined up with the edges of the walls. Then we put the roof skin back on. We tried everything though to get this skin clean. We used a grinder, we sanded it, and finally, what worked was aircraft stripper. All right, putting stripper on, let it set a little bit. Once it was clean, we put the roof back on, and then there's that aircraft stripper again. We stripped all the old paint off of the sides using aircraft stripper and then wiping it down with mineral spirits. And once it was nice and clean, which I do actually kind of like the way it looked with it all stripped down. Once it was all nice and clean, we put new butyl tape on it and attached new roof rail to the camper. Now, for whatever reason, I decided to use rattle cans to prime this instead of just using some primer and my sprayer. But it worked, basically. I wouldn't do it again, but it worked. I taped everything off and I mixed my paint with mineral spirits and I started spraying the camper. So you'll see a mistake here. I should have painted the top first to avoid overspray settling on the lower paint, but you know, you live and learn. Once I had done all this, I realized I didn't like how thick I had made that center stripe. So I went ahead and remasked it and repainted it so that that center cream colored stripe was thinner. And I was really happy with how that looked ultimately when I was done. So windows. This is probably my least favorite part of this camper. Uh, I took apart each window, cleaned them up, resealed them, I thought, and then put them back in with new butyl tape and all that, and uh, ultimately, they still leaked. And I know why, and I can fix it, I just still have not fixed it to this day. So, oops. Then I put the hatch back on and moved on to the interior. I framed up the front couch using 2x2s that I ripped down from 2x4s and did the same in the back. The back I actually built as a pull-out bed or some people will call these a gaucho style bed. Um, ultimately, the problem I ran into is that I built these drawers to go under it and you can't use them when it is in bed mode. So I eventually rebuilt that as a fixed bed and I'm much much happier with that. Then I built the kitchen cabinets out of the same stud material. Uh, I faced it with plywood and a little bit of trim router action here. Then I built some drawers for it. Very simple. Installed them. Put faces on them. Then I built the upper cabinet same way as the bottom. I primed everything. Which was kind of cold so I had to use a space heater. Then we painted everything, used my sprayer to paint the faces, put it all back together. Oh at some point I did a floor. Don't know where the video went for that but there it is. Turned out nice. And I put the hardware on. For the countertop I used uh, some leftover butcher block that I had had from another project. Cut the hole for the sink and the faucet and put everything together. I did sort of a van life water system and it sort of worked but it never worked very well so eventually I replaced that with a city water inlet and I was much happier. I did this cool backsplash using little sticker tiles and was really happy with how that turned out. Then I used some old memory foam mattresses to cut down for material for cushions and uh, my mother-in-law showed me how to use a sewing machine, which I hadn't used since middle school, and I made these covers for the cushions and put everything together, along with some reasonably nice window shades. Then I added the power converter and installed some lights and these USB outlets that I don't really use very often. Added a few finishing touches that Catherine had picked out and decided on to make it nice and homey. And there it is. It took two years and about $5,000 in total, but it's done and it's mine. Was it worth it? I think so. But what do you think? Would you remodel a vintage camper? Let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.